As the World Cup qualifiers draw to a close, EPL teams can finally get back to business this weekend, and one team in particular will be chomping at the bit to get out on the pitch on Saturday. Manchester United pulled off the mother of all transfer window coups by luring back none other than CR7 himself, and with Edison Cavani honorably relinquishing the shirt, fans could see Ronaldo don his iconic number 7 jersey against Newcastle. But after winning the Serie A Golden Boot last season, can Cristiano replicate that form in the world's most competitive league? Here's James Sherman on the records Ronaldo has in his sights this season. You can blame one, one, one person as to why September is dragging on. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. You see, he signed back with Manchester United a couple of days prior to the August 31st transfer deadline, ahead of the international break, so he's just trained with United as of this past Tuesday. Now, we've been waiting a very long time to see him back as a Red Devil, so Newcastle this Saturday appears to be the target, but will he start with so little time with his new old team, or will he wait until next Tuesday and the Champions League opener against Young Boys? We'll soon know, but all that aside, there's some Müller to be made with CR7 this season if you like some long-term planning. Already the joint favourite for the England's Golden Boot, you can have him at a very nice plus 300 and a minus 129, surely he'll score 22 or more goals, right? It's a juicy plus 1200 if he hits the 30 goal benchmark, minus 160 for at least one hat-trick this season of course, and to lead all others in the Champions League, plus 1100. Let Ronaldo pay you back for all those shirts you're probably going to buy. Thanks James. From one elite striker to another, last season's EPL top scorer Harry Kane missed out on his move to Man City and will now spearhead the Tottenham Hotspur attack for one more season at least. And with new manager that has Spurs playing the direct attacking football that fans want to see, are Tottenham realistic title contenders at last? On this week's Fast Money Football, I put the question to Michael Angelani. Tottenham are sitting pretty at the top of the league and somehow managed to keep hold of Harry Kane. Are they now realistic contenders for the league title? Uh, absolutely not. Tottenham are, are not real contenders in my opinion. I think they're, I think they're a few steps down um, and look for them to finish around maybe third, fourth, fifth, as, as per usual. Yeah, for me, I think that Tottenham, they're not at the same level as Man U, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, and it's early, there's a long season, and so far we do see a lack of goal scoring from them, so we'll see how that works out, um, you know, for the rest of the season, but defensively they're doing well. Yeah, I completely agree with both of you. I think we spoke about this a couple weeks back. Just the uh, the consistency, I don't think it's going to last because of the, the team itself. It doesn't seem like they're completely mended. They're molded together. I don't trust it. <laughs> okay, so who had the best transfer window? Chelsea, Man United, or Man City? For me, the best transfer window, I have to be a homer and say Manchester United. Um, we obviously get Ronaldo back. Uh, he's one of the greatest players of all time, still high class player. I know he's older, but we also get Sancho years of speculation. Is that going to happen or not? He comes through and also we bolster the defense with Varane. So I have to go with United on this one. Um, OK, so speaking to two United fans, I know we're a little biased, but I'm going to have to agree with you because I think you're right in the sense of they got a player in kind of each, you know, midfield defense forward. And I think Lukaku uh, going to Chelsea was huge, but overall United snagged way more players. Hey, you're, you're speaking to two United fans, Sarah. Like, <laughs> nothing but agreements here. I think when you ever you can land a player of Cristiano Ronaldo's caliber, and let alone Rafael Varane as well and Jaden Sancho. Those are three superstars at three very important positions in the game, and it's tough to argue against that. I will put Chelsea up there as a close second, however, but Man City spending a boatload of money for Jack Grealish, I don't know if that'll pay the same dividends as, as some of these other moves, so I, I'm with you guys there. With a smile on my face, too. Yeah, so is the United fan again. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo scored more than Lukaku in the last Series A last season. Can he do the same in the EPL? 
Uh, you know, this is going to be really tough because I think Lukaku uh, has a little bit more coming from behind him in the midfield with Chelsea. Of course, we know Ronaldo's caliber and what he's able to accomplish and what he has accomplished in the City of, but I think Lukaku might have a bit of a step up, not even because of the, you know, Ronaldo's a bit older, he has a bit of age on him, but I think Chelsea's midfield are nasty, and I think they're going to be pushing through and creating a lot more chances with, you know, they have players like Conte, Mason Mount, Jorginho, like that midfield is insane. So primarily because of that, I think Lukaku might be able to do it. Overrated. Overrated. <laughs> that midfield is, is a little bit overrated, uh, in my opinion. But that being said, Lukaku has one job, and that's to score goals. And he, he's going to be paid based on you know his, his ability to score goals. And I think Ronaldo might be asked to do a little bit more for Manchester United than just put the ball in the back of the net. So for that reason, I, I actually agree with you, Sarah. I think Lukaku will, uh, will surprise a few people, perhaps, and, and beat Ronaldo out of the, the Golden Boot race. Yeah, and I have to be the third one to say <laughs> um, I think that obviously you're looking at Man U and you would say, yeah, Ronaldo could do it and, you know, outscore Lukaku, but there's also other options there. Greenwood, Rashford, Cavani when he gets back, uh, all these guys are there, Sancho. So I don't think that the goal scoring opportunities and chances will be as much for Ronaldo at United as they'll be for Lukaku in Chelsea. I think a lot more reliance will be on uh, Lukaku to get those goals and we'll see a lot more opportunities for him to get it done with uh, Chelsea. From title contenders to the bargain basement, Arsenal's season has been one to forget so far. With an opening run of matches so bad that Mikel Arteta is surely only one more loss from the door. But the problems go much deeper than the manager and in this week's Seriously Football, Jackie Pirico explores a curious footballing role that has players and fans alike scratching their heads. Technical director, what does that even mean? Whatever the job is, whatever the title means, Edu is taking the role to a whole new level at Arsenal. The Gunners were the biggest spenders in the transfer window this season, but results have been underwhelming to say the least. Three games, three losses, zero goals. Bottom of the table, trolled by ex-players, manager Mikel Arteta's job hanging by a thread. If you technically directed this North London car crash, I'd say you'd be fleeing the crime scene right about now. But not Edu, oh no. You have to imagine the Arsenal board winced when he laid out his planned media response. Instead of fessing up to the worst start of a season in 67 years and honorably calling it a day, Edu was doubling down instead. The Strategy? Stare Arsenal fans dead in the face and gaslight the living shit out of every last one of them. Three losses out of three? Relax, it's all part of the plan. Discouraged, depressed, chronically underperforming squad? Of course, it's right there on page one of the success blueprint. 270 minutes without a single goal? <laughs> Don't look down, baby, we're dancing. It's either the most cunning political genius since the time of Machiavelli, or the worst piece of technical direction since that one dude on the Titanic was like, yeah, we should be okay, I think. Now, in Edu's defense, things have changed since he was a player 20 years ago. Today's footballer is a pampered prima donna with millions of followers and millions of dollars. If Aubameyang and Lacazette quit football today, they never have to work again, and 6,000 likes per selfie, it does wonders for your confidence. In Edu's day, players were constantly on edge fighting for their livelihoods in locker rooms that were literally bristling with competition. At Man United, Beckham famously got a boot in the face and players lived in fear of Sir Alex Ferguson's infamous hair dryer treatment. But in the Arsenal locker room of 2021, the only fight taking place is on Fortnite. And you get the sense that Arteta's hair dryer treatment is just a gentle blow dry with a little off the sides. So maybe there isn't much left to technically direct anyway. But one thing is for sure, Edu, your team sucks. I mean, they're awful. They're really, come on, they're awful. In fact, Arsenal stinks so bad that the only appropriate technicality here would be to drop that second syllable altogether. Thanks, Jackie. And Arsenal feature in our EPL parlay this week alongside big wins at the top of the table. If you haven't seen our picks for this weekend's action, check it out on TikTok now. So that's my EPL parlay for this week. Take Manchester United to beat Newcastle at minus 600. Take Chelsea to beat Villa at minus 400. And take Norwich to draw at Arsenal at plus 320 for a combined parlay of plus 512. That's all for me. Thanks for watching and enjoy what should be an eventful weekend of football to say the least.